you got to bend everything, even to go into a box to terminate for your, you need to build, you need to bend an offset. So why do you need conduit? Why do you need conduit? What's the point? You use conduit because it's the raceway that's easier than cable. So a cable, a pre-made cable usually has two, three, four way up wires in it. You can use conduit, you can get up to, so this size of conduit you can pull, the uh, most common size, number 12 wire you'll use. Uh, you can put up to 12 of them in this one conduit. So the benefit of conduit everywhere is you can get more circuits run to the same spot in one piece of pipe instead of multiple runs. It's a cleaner install. It's mechanically protecting the wire as well from uh, incident. From being hit with anything or mice like to chew two three. Yeah. Mice like heat. They like to chew on insulation. Drywall is like to put the screws through it. Yeah. A drywall will find out pretty quick when they hit a piece of metal compared to just the wire. They won't feel if it's in a housing situation. Uh, there's a pre made cable you run everywhere, but commercial everything is run in conduit. It's the spec by engineers to be ran in conduit. For everything. Fire alarm security, power, lighting, everything. So when you connect to a box, you've got this little device, the DMT connector. And if you notice on the box, it's all raised up. So you can, when you knock these out and you thread this lock nut in there, it's raised up. So even if you were to run a straight run and you want to put a box, you have to bend a small offset. You have to bend the conduit up to get into the box so that it doesn't just sort of come on an angle in the box. It's a nice, and that's, conduit, be, conduit bending becomes the pride of a lot of trade people, especially in commercial installs. It's, the ceiling is usually goes in within maybe four or five months of the job being finished. So you have a year and a half, two year job, your conduit exposed for every tradesperson out there to look at. And they will see it and they will point out the stuff that are, who the hell ran that? Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> Trade people notice, then if you don't make it look nice, someone will point it out and they'll tell you. So it becomes a pride ship when you run conduit. Some of you get, and you only get good by experience. They, don't, they teach you in trade school, uh, in basic, Trade school, they teach you maybe three classes of your eight weeks, how to bend conduit, the rest is all on the job training. And you only get good by people only you learn from and doing it. And the inspectors can and have failed just by aesthetically looking at your work. If it looks like a dog's breakfast, the inspector can fail it. It could be the code. Everything could be right, but if he's not happy with the fact that you're not taking any pride in your job, then you'll just say do it over. We, we, like we have code rules, so there's straps here that hold Same it. Same with it's We've got code rules for strapping. How far straps can be from the box, how far between straps to the next strap. Everything. It's all, it's all in one book. And if, unfortunately, that book is written by lawyers. You got to know how to read to find what you're looking for. Very interpretive. So it, it's and with this with troubleshooting is I've seen a lot of people will just work at ten feet at a time piece they're working on and they get to the end of the ten feet and they realize oh I got to go around this now and they bend around it next ten feet oh I got to go this way now. We also have COVID rules that say you can only have max amount of 360 degrees between boxes. So if you just keep going 10 feet at a time, you can get 360 degrees worth of bend pretty quick and not, not go very far. Where if you walk out the run and you decide, okay, this, I gotta go around. Here's a problem I have. It may just decide where you start to run at the beginning. I'll start at five inches, six inches lower, then I don't have to offset around. It's all problem solving. And if you don't be using a lot of material, 
costing a lot of money to their employer if it's not done right or correct. Any questions? Can you show us how you've done that? For sure. So there's mark there is markings on the side of this fender. It's got different um, it's got 10, 22, 30, 45, and 60, and then right around to the end here is a 93 bend. So if you wanted to, I'll start with a simple box offset. Just go from the box out. Put it in, pull down. Then flip it around in the other way. So there's a simple box offset. And then if you had to make a 90, so this shoe, there's, when you go bigger, they get, the distance gets bigger. From the start of here to the back of this takes up five inches. So when you measure, so say you wanted from the ceiling, you go into the wall, you know that measurement. You subtract the five inches to start the start of the bend. So for instance, you say whatever right there. Bend. And then this is known as a shoe and it helps you go to the floor, push with your foot. There's a 93 bend. And you can do all kinds of stuff. There's three point cells, four point cells. Uh, show an example of a four point cell. Like you can do the bigger stuff that a lot of it's hydraulically bent. Yeah, so anything over, um, there is a hand bender for inch and a quarter, but it's pretty hard to use. Pretty well, anything over one inch, there are there is hydraulic benders and they get then they go from one inch or they do half inch as well but they go all the way up to four inch uh, for at least for EMT there's that's half inch here. this is half inch here so this is the smallest trade size we have and then there's three quarter one inch and so on one inch one inch and a quarter inch and a half two inch two and a half three four let's do four point seven If you had to go up and over or something, this is an example of when you bend the fork point saddle. And it's, if you bend it wrong, you can take out a little bit here and there and re-bend. These are pretty flexible. Now there is measurements on how to do this correctly. I'm just doing it by eye, and it's something I've done since I was 16, so. Can one of these guys try and bend something? Yeah, for sure. Does anyone want to try? Give it a try. Come on, Griff, you're always up. All right. Come on. So, for instance, with the four-point saddle, if you had whatever difference in 